So today I'm going to talk about modifying the AR drone so it works with an RC transmitter like the DX6i. This really isn't going to be a thorough tutorial but you can find a really nice tutorial from uh, rcgroups.com by a guy named M. Healy. He has a very detailed how-to uh, and if you follow it to a T you shouldn't have any issues. So this video will just give you a general idea of what is involved. As you know, the AR drone is a quadrocopter that can be controlled via Wi-Fi with an iOS device like an iPhone or an iPod Touch or an iPad. If you've ever used a regular RC transmitter before, you'll realize that it's a lot easier to control with a radio such as this one uh, versus like the non-tactile screen of an iPhone. Not only that, but you'll also increase the range since uh, Wi-Fi has a very limited range while uh, a 2.4 gigahertz transmitter receiver can probably do about 500 meters to a kilometer it really depends on the brand you buy the AR drone is controlled via the ad hoc uh, Wi-Fi network from any iOS device so in this mod you're essentially taking the iPhone out of the equation and replacing it with another Wi-Fi enabled device which is this little thing here um, this is a yellow jacket and it has a receiver that is soldered onto the yellow jacket that gets signals from the transmitter. So that's pretty much it. So to do this mod, you're going to need a Async Labs yellow jacket, which is this little device here, FTDI programming board, a BEC, receiver of your choice, and transmitter. And I'm going to tell you what all these things do in a, in a minute. So the yellow jacket is the heart of this modification. It's what sends the Wi-Fi commands to the AR drone. You can get it for about $60. Um, I got it from robotshop.com. The FTDI breakout board, it's used to program the yellow jacket. So you plug this thing, this little board to the yellow jacket, then you plug a USB cable to one end, and then you plug it to your computer, and then you can use the Arduino uh, application to program the yellow jacket. Once you program the yellow jacket you don't really need this board anymore so you can put that away. I got this FTDI breakout board for about $15. The BEC stands for battery eliminating circuit. It's needed because we're gonna power the yellow jacket and the receiver with the onboard battery from the AR drone. However the battery is 11.1 volts. The yellow jacket and receiver only needs like 5 volts so if you plug this directly to the battery you'll blow it so that's where this BEC comes in it actually converts 11.1 volts down to 5 volts so this particular one it's a Turnigy brand one it lets you uh, it actually has a jumper here it lets you select between 5 volts and 6 volts so make sure you get on 5 volts you can get these for about five ten dollars as for the transmitter and receiver, it's just a matter of choice. Um, I'm going to use the Spectrum DX6i, which I have right here. You can use pretty much any programmable transmitter, but it's preferred that it is 2.4 gigahertz, and it has to have at least five channels. So you need channels for yaw, pitch, roll, throttle, and landing and takeoff. This mod will require some soldering and require you to edit files from a command line. So if that's something that doesn't scare you, then go for it. You need to solder some leads, like these, these are JR leads, um, to the yellow jacket. The yellow jacket has um, inputs for the receiver, and you basically get some standard JR extension cables. Once you solder them to the yellow jacket, you can start plugging them into the receiver. The pitch, yaw, throttle, and auxiliary channels only have the white um, signal cable, whereas the roll channel will carry the positive, negative, and signal. This particular receiver is a DSM-2 compatible receiver that I got from Hobby King for about $8 and it works pretty well. One of the first things you're going to need to do is program this yellow jacket. You have to upload a sketch or a program to the yellow jacket to tell it how to communicate with the AR drone. You use uh, the Arduino application to upload the program or the sketch. And to upload the sketch you need the FTDI breakout board which is a programming board that you plug to your computer. To program the yellow jacket, you're going to need to download Arduino, 
it's in version uh, 0021 right now as well as the sketch or program for uh, the yellow jacket and the Y shield libraries you can get all these from the rcgroups.com forum so to install it all you need to do is drag the app file into the applications folder and also install the FTDI USB serial drivers for uh, the Mac for the PC side when I was using Windows 7 I didn't need to install any drivers for the FTDI uh, breakout board now you're gonna have to install the Y Shield libraries um, on the Mac side you right click on the Arduino app and then you select show package contents and then go to resources go to contents then resources then Java then libraries and this is where you would drag the Y Shield um, libraries I've already done that but you would unzip it and then you drag this folder into here and that's all you need to do now we're gonna load the Arduino application itself and we also need the sketch or the program for the yellow jacket so you can also download this from um, the rcgroups.com website unzip it and we're gonna open a sketch so here it is you want to open up the PDE file so now that the sketch is open you want to make sure that you have um, the proper board selected so you want to make sure it's on Arduino Pro or Pro Mini 5 volt 60 megahertz with at mega 328 and for the serial port in my case I'm using this one you want to make sure that's selected after you verified that you have the right board and serial port selected you can start uploading the uh, sketch to the yellow jacket by hitting this button another thing you'll have to do is to set up your radio uh, for my DX6i I set it up as a non CCPM helicopter with no mixing the receiver will have channels and each channel controls something like the pitch or the elevator and you'll have to adjust them so they work properly with the yellow jacket since we're going to be using the transmitter to control the AR drone, we have to make sure that all these sticks and uh, switches do what it's supposed to do. So we're going to use the gyro switch here to make the drone take off or land. And we're going to use the sticks here to maneuver the drone. And we have to make sure that they're properly set up in terms of the reversing and the endpoints. To verify that the endpoints and the reversing is correct, um, we're going to hook up the yellow jacket to the computer and then we're going to use the serial monitor to see what the sticks are doing. So now that you've connected the yellow jacket to your PC or Mac with the uh, FTDI board, you can now use the uh, serial monitor to help you adjust the endpoints and reversing of the transmitter so it can control your AR drone. With the serial monitor open, you want to make sure that the baud rate is 38400. So when you start the serial monitor, this is what you should see. The first thing I'll ask you to do is center all your sticks on your transmitter. And when you do that, this should uh, start initializing. And now it says grounded. When configuring the radio, the values don't have to be dead on. It could be within 100 or so. The first channel we're going to modify is the auxiliary channel on the yellow jacket. It's used for takeoff and landing and it's usually on a transmitter it's the gyro switch. The auxiliary channel on the yellow jacket will usually connect to the gear channel on your receiver. When in the low position like now the value should be about 950. So mine's about 966 which is right and in the high position it should be about 2000 and mine's just a little bit under 2000 but that's good enough if the values are reversed like if you have it on the low position and it's actually 2000 then you want to reverse the channel on your transmitter you need to adjust the endpoints or travel adjustments on your transmitter that when you're in the low position for the auxiliary channel the value is about 950 and in the high position it should be around 2000 so if this isn't the case then go to your uh, endpoint adjustments or travel adjustments and make that change accordingly. The next thing we're going to adjust is the throttle. On a mode 2 transmitter the throttle is controlled on the left stick. 
when it's at the low position the value should be about 1000 in my case it's uh, a little bit over a thousand but that's good and the throttle move should be a little bit under negative one so mine's negative 0.97 which is fine if the if it's positive then what you're going to need to do is reverse the throttle channel like the auxiliary channel you're going to need to adjust the uh, endpoint adjustments or the travel adjustments so that the throttle move is about a little bit under negative one now when the throttle is in the high position it should be around 1900 and in my case it's a little bit under 1900 it's 1890 and the throttle move should be a little bit under positive 1 mine's 0 0.97 so that's good now we're gonna modify the yaw or the rudder and that's controlled on the left stick as well when the rudder stick is moved all the way to the right it should have a value about 1900 so mine's about 1887 and the yaw move is a positive 96 it should be a little bit under positive 1 so that's good and if it isn't you're gonna need to reverse the channel on your transmitter so the pitch or the elevator is controlled with the right stick when the stick is at the lowest position it should have a value of about 1900 uh, mine is about 1876 77 the pitch move value should be a little bit under 1 so in my case 0 0.94 if it's a negative value, like if you're getting negative 0.94, then you need to reverse it in your transmitter. So you want to adjust your endpoints or your uh, travel adjustments so that this value for the pitch move is about uh, a little bit under 1. So like 0.9594. So what I have is fine. When the pitch is at the highest position, it should have a value of about 1,000. So in my case, it's about 1072 and the pitch move value is, should be under negative 1 so mine is negative 0.9192 that's okay again you want to adjust the uh, endpoint adjustment so that it's around there now for roll or aileron it's also controlled with your right stick when you move the stick all the way to the right it should have a value of about 1900 and a move value slightly under 1 and when you move it all the way to the left it should have a value about a thousand so mine's about 1055 56 and a move value under negative one so mine's negative 0.94 which is fine again you want to adjust the endpoints so the value of the roll move is just a little bit under negative one so after you've done all these endpoint adjustments and servo reversing you want to basically verify that the sticks are doing what it's supposed to do so when you switch on the gyro switch it should do a flat trim and then start taking off and then it should ho start hovering so this is what you're seeing right now so when you move the sticks you should see that the values are changing and you should see the status that it is flying right here it's flying and then when you let go of the sticks it should be hovering and then when you flip the um, gyro switch back to um, the low position it should start landing and it is The next thing you're going to need to do is modify the AR drone via the command line so it talks with the yellow jacket. You do this by townetting into the Linux console on the drone. The reason why you need to do this is because the, the drone only wants to talk to uh, Wi-Fi devices that communicate at 11 megabits per second, whereas the yellow jacket only communicates at 2 megabits per second. So you need to modify the Wi-Fi configuration inside the drone uh, to accept the 2 megabit uh, connections from the yellow jacket. Basically what you're going to be doing is making a backup of the config file and you're going to have to modify one line inside the config file and then you're going to save it to flash and then you reboot it. You're going to have to configure the yellow jacket to connect to the AR drone. Um, you have to modify the yellow jacket so that it connects to your drone's ad hoc Wi-Fi network the network name or SSID will be something like AR drone underscore and then six numbers. It's different for everybody. You modify the config.h file with the Arduino application to make the yellow jacket look for this Wi Fi network, then upload it to the yellow jacket. To configure the yellow jacket to connect to the AR drone's Wi Fi network, we're going to modify the user config.h file. 
I'm going to change these values to 0. And we're also going to put in your AR drone's Wi Fi or SSID name. For most people, it will be AR drone underscore and then like six digits. After you plug that information in, all you do is you hit the upload button. After this mod, you could still use your iOS device to control the AR drone if you want. You just have to unplug the yellow jacket and pair it up with your iOS device like usual. You can even use your transmitter to control the AR drone, but then use your iPod or iPad to receive the video signals. You just have to follow a specific startup sequence. So if you want to have a video downlink to your iPhone or iPad while using your RC transmitter, this is the launch sequence. So on your iPhone, make sure you're on the Wi-Fi network setting screen. Turn on your transmitter and make sure you have the right model selected. Then you want to center your sticks, especially your throttle. You want to make sure it's uh, in the center. Then you're going to power on the drone by plugging in the battery and it's going to boot up. So once it boots up, the light will turn green and at the same time, the iPhone will pick up the AR drone network here. Then what you're going to do now is before you connect to that network, you want to hit the unpair button on the bottom of the drone. So once you press the unpair button, the lights will flash red and green. Now connect to the AR drone network. Once you're connected to the AR drone ad hoc network, with the iPhone, you launch the free flight application or the flight record application and you should see a video signal now being set to the iPhone. Now what you're going to do is turn on the yellow jacket and receiver so your transmitter can control the AR drone. So once the yellow jacket is connected to the AR drone, the, the green light should come on on the yellow jacket and the lights on the motor should flash alternately and the AR drone is armed and once you flick this switch on your transmitter it should take off and at the same time you'll have uh, the ability to have a video downlink to your iOS device as well as controlling the AR drone with your RC transmitter. That's about it. Uh, please check out M Healy's tutorial on uh, rcgroups.com for more detailed information. If this looks like something that you can do, then go for it. I think it makes the drone a lot more fun and maneuverable. So the launch sequence for the AR drone is as follows. First thing you're going to need to do is turn on the transmitter and make sure you have the right uh, model selected. Then you're going to move your sticks to new, uh, center, so especially the throttle. Then you're going to plug the battery in to the AR drone. This will make the drone boot up. And when the lights turn green, that means the AR drone is booted up. And then you're going to plug the power uh, to the yellow jacket and the receiver. And at this point right now, the yellow jacket is going to connect to the AR drone via the ad hoc Wi-Fi network. And as you can see, it's blinking. That means that this uh, drone is armed and ready to go. And the minute you flick this switch here, um, it'll take off. I'm not going to have it take off on my desk, but trust me on this one.
obviously I can't really do a hands-off hover because the wind is just blowing it, but anyways, the wind has kind of stopped. As you can see, it's just hovering there. The wind is starting to pick up now. So landing. A little bit windy here. I'm actually going against the wind here. So we're still getting the video downlink from the iPhone here. You can see. about now. Wow, it's just like 